Hey, welcome to Men On. This is our our companion program since Scandal is on a hiatus. We are doing Men On. Men On, lots of different topics. So uh, I'm Tony Scott. That's Troy Johnson. That's Mark Clark. And uh, a lot of stuff happened this week. Uh, Maya Angelou passed away. She was 86 years old. Yeah. And uh, I didn't know she was sick. She, well, I, think I think she's, she's just been, been kind of under, under the, the weather, weather, you know. Uh, but, but you're right. right. I, I, I think, think I, I had, had this conversation, conversation uh, uh, with some people, people, and they were like, you know, know I mean, a woman, woman who's 86, 86 years old obviously lived a long, long fruitful life, life, so you can't really argue about that. that. But yeah, I think, I think society, society today, today, when you hear about someone passing away or someone who hasn't been in the, in the news eye as much as they used to be, and then suddenly they're gone, people are still shocked by it. You know? Sure. Yeah, you know, so, and this was uh, this was one of those cases. So I was reading uh, this article this morning and heard some audio where a nine one one dispatcher got suspended uh, because uh, during the during the call, the nine one one call for Doctor Angelo, that uh, in the background somebody was making comments about Oprah and racism and things like that. Now I listened to it and I couldn't make heads or tails out of it. We've got the audio on Talking360.com if you want to check it out. But I was like, I, I can't, I, I can't, I can't call it, man. Have you guys heard it? No, no, no. I was I like, I, that. yeah. And the, apparently, the, like I said, the nine one one dispatcher got got uh, suspended over what happened. But I can't make heads or tails out of it at all. And uh, I was maybe I thought maybe you guys had heard it and stuff like that. So, so there's a lot of people, you know. And I didn't, I, you know, I I knew how awesome dr angelo was but she really she i mean because i've never really been part of that whole spoken word thing although i can appreciate some of the things she has said mm -hmm. and written but uh, she apparently touched um uh, more people than i ever realized oh yeah yeah i yeah. think i think you know and we're talking about a woman who was uh, you know uh, there's a word that that mark uses a lot wordsmith which is, you know, more of a hip hop term, but but uh, I was looking at it. If you have not looked at, and if you are not a huge Maya Angelou fan, but you want to get plugged in, the best thing for you to do, to watch is um, Oprah Winfrey's master class with Maya Angelou, mm -hmm. because it's like she's talking directly to you okay. about all of her life experiences, all all the things that she accomplished, all of her dreams and. I mean, it's, it's so touching. I mean, it, it is it, her facial expressions uh, when you watch it. Just you see someone who deeply cares about everybody on this planet. It it it, it just it's just amazing. It, it's it's and it's an hour. You can handle that. Yeah. But but, yeah. I, but I think um, she just all 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 of the triumphs in her life are equally matched with all of the. Um, all of the struggles that she had to go through and oh and she overcame them and she embraces all of them you know the woman was you know a prostitute at one time in her life mm -hmm. she had to do whatever she could to take care of her child you know if it wasn't for her education and the fact that she got one you know it could have gone this story could have gone a completely different direction mm. um, so I mean all of and she embraces all of that stuff now she has a son, right? Correct? Is that is, is that right? She did have a son. Yeah, so a son is yeah. now now because I, I, I I didn't know she had a child. I mean, mm -hmm. I didn't know that much about her. I knew I knew how strong her words were, but as a, a personal life, yeah, I knew she was a dancer, and I knew she had done some prostituting early in her life because she had to, or she felt like she had to. And but I never knew she had a child, and she has a son now. Is he still alive? That's a good question, Tony. <laughs> yeah, good question. Now, I, very, I, I guess she was pretty private about her private life, which is good. Yeah, yeah. In, in a lot of ways, I think the, um, like Troy said, I mean, she is a national treasure, and that's why you know the the people in her generation who are still alive and still articulate, who lived through civil rights and lived through these different eras, man. I don't think we, uh, as an African American community, really, really understand and and appreciate and value. I mean, from Quincy Jones to uh, Dick Gregory to Bill Cosby to Maya Angelou, they firsthand had relationships 
with the Kennedys and with Martin Luther King, with Malcolm X and with, you know, all these great, all these, all these stories. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't think we, I think it really, we really don't understand. We really don't appreciate um, that generation. And they, they really were there as everything developed, you know, and she, and she was, you know, imagine the influence that she's had on Oprah. In fact, Oprah, who always acknowledges that, uh, she's her, her, her mentor and, and, and the person she goes to for counsel. Uh, I just think she shaped Maya Angelou indirectly, probably shaped more things, like you said, Tony, than we even are aware of. Right. So it's bigger than just her poetry. And then uh, you think about poetry. She is the, 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 the biggest poet of our times, that hands down. I mm-hmm. mean, uh, from yeah. from president to president to uh, her, her poems for uh, special occasions or tragedies in our country's history. Mm-hmm. You can't really think of anyone else who's is as prominent as a poet as as she is, but like you said, Tony, some people aren't really into spoken word into poetry, but it's almost, it's bigger than poetry. Yeah. Well, you're right. You're right about that. And, and, and the poetry tip, Mark, since you just mentioned that, there are two things. One, in in, uh, in the master class, she mentions the fact that the United Nations asked her to write a poem about the world. <laughs> you know, <laughs> can you imagine, like, the pressure that that had to be? Hey, we need you to do this poem for the world for us. Can you hook that up? <laughs> I need that by Tuesday. <laughs> and, yeah, by Tuesday. And the State Department asked her to write a poem for Nelson Mandela um, before he died. And <clears throat> I think uh, the story was, uh, I don't know if it was a year before he died, but it was definitely some, some time before he passed away. And she, she obviously had to keep it a secret, never said anything about it, but the poem was released in like 14 languages uh, within 24 hours after his death, so wow. yeah. now I, I didn't know the woman spoke six languages. Yeah, wow. I, I didn't. I did not know that about her. I read that this week about her that she actually was uh, spoken six different languages. So now, no matter what language you say, uh, it all comes out the same. Arsenio got canceled this week, man. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter what language, adios, you know, whatever. But it it, it only lasted a year. The uh, comeback. And I, I got to say, I'm not surprised. There was a lot more competition this time than there was last time he was on. But, you know, the problem I had with the show was that it was the same exact yes. show that that it was in the 90s. Yes. And I think that was like a major problem. That it never they, they didn't do anything really different at all except, well, I can't think of anything they did different. Did well, they do and anything they, different? And here's another problem. Arsenio ain't funny. Uh, <laughs> well, but see, but see that that's that's relative to to, to who's watching. Some people think no. he's hilarious. You know well, who is, you tell, you know who it's relative to? What CBS? Uh, <laughs> they canceled well, that. Well, well, let me let me. I posted this uh, in a long. I won't be that long on my my comment, but I think um, I think that I think this is good and bad. You know, mm-hmm. I think number one, the bad, and I commend Arsenio. Love him or hate him, yeah. Arsenio brought great guests to the show. He did. He had because of his, unlike other, but unlike all the other shows, because Arsenio was basically the first black host in our times that had a show that was successful. The stories were amazing, from the Ice Cube who meets, you know, uh, uh, John Singleton who was at, working at the show. He met him there, mm-hmm. and then that became their relationship. All these great behind the scenes stories that these artists, black and white, shared on his couch. Amazing. And un- underappreciated. Um, I think the, uh, like Troy said, the bad news was, you know, Ars- is Arsenio funny? I don't know. Uh, the writing the writing and the budget for writing, obviously, they didn't have one, and some of the bits and stuff were whack. But at the end of the day, I think black people, especially, um, back to the apathy and not understanding how this thing works. If you don't support Arsenio Hall, guess what, black people? You will not have a show on television because Arsenio Hall was was the measure. Let's see. Is there a viable market for it? Should be. Do they support? No. So even if you didn't like Arsenio Hall, people should have supported the show. But to me, it speaks to how we don't understand. We're very critical. And I was critical, too, when it first started. But then when I started seeing his guests, it, it hit me. 
if you have, if you have time to record a show and to spend some time with the show, you almost have to because if you don't and you're black and in entertainment, guess what? You're not going to get a shot. So uh, here's my prediction: ain't nobody getting a shot. <laughs> that was it. Late night TV well, is changing. Who knows if it's still viable? But there will not be another African American show uh, on television because th- 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 they're saying it doesn't make money. It, well, it but, but okay, a couple things here. One is our African Americans is the pressure still there to watch a program that may not be good simply because it's hosted by an African American? It's always are we, there. Are we? Are we? St- uh, is that always going to be there? I mean, if something sucks, it's. I'm not saying Arsenio sucked. I didn't watch it enough times this time around to to really come up with a de- determination. I just. I one thing I didn't notice though that it was uh, it was the same show. Yeah. So, uh, but but I mean, is it still there? I mean, people say you know African Americans are always under the gun to say we got to support our shows, even yes. if they're whack. You got to support. You, I mean, you it's, st- it's about it's about your audience. If, if you have a, if you want an audience, here's here, this is this, this, this But why 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 do I have to have that kind of pressure to watch something that isn't good? It's yeah. not pressure. It's no, there is no pressure. What I'm saying is, here, this is what we all know, and we've been in radio, so we know. All that BS that people say what they really want mm-hmm. is not true. True. People, everybody watches reality, negative reality television shows. The ratings are through the roof. Hands down, no argument. All those people that go to church and talk about, I want a positive show, I want this and that. They watch Tyler Perry. They watch reality shows. That's what works. All this other stuff, Oprah is not necessarily working. All the positive things, uh, your man uh, <laughs> on TV One with the ascot. Rating stuff. <laughs> oh, r- uh, rolling. Yes. All, all the stuff that is positive and talking yeah. about something has low ratings because Americans basically just want to be entertained. So well, my, well, I, I guess if you if the people who say they want something, mm-hmm. uh, uh, they have to support it if they want it on TV. If you don't want it on TV, then no, you don't have to. You just support what you like, which is reality TV. Well, let me let me let me let me ask you this then, because I mean, because I, I kind of I kind of agree that it, it'll be at the very least it'll be a while before another African American gets a host uh, a late night show again. That's but not true. but That's but not true. well, I mean, I mean, being what it is though, well, I mean, is, I'm, is I'm, it I mean, actually the guy that's going to replace? Um, um, uh, Oh, who's replacing Letterman? Oh, you're talking yes. about uh, Colbert. Colbert, the guy that's replacing Colbert is is uh, African American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lot, and a lot of people don't. don't yeah, I, I remember reading that. That, that, but that, that kind of show, right? That kind of show is not targeted for African Americans. That's all. That's all, I guess what I'm saying. It, it's not targeted for African Americans. You're going to see. It's going to be a general show, which is so. If you is, target an African uh, target African Americans, you got to have just African Americans on the show. Yeah. No, they don't bring they don't bring artists on the show. There are no R and B artists that are br- brought on these regular shows. The only R and B artists you see on television are those who've crossed over who have huge success. Mm-hmm. So if you want a show that talks to a Dick Gregory, that talks to a Maya Angelou, that talks to you know people who are not necessarily mainstreamers, then you're not going to get it. Yeah, you can. The host, you're right. It's not about the black host. It's mm-hmm. about the content of what you're bringing to the show. Okay. And so Arsenio, who can talk about a Magic Johnson about really Magic Johnson, not the one that he presents on the general stage. That's what you get. So that's what I'm saying. You're just going to get shows, but they're not going to give you the depth or the or, or that. And maybe it, maybe people didn't want that because they didn't support it. You know. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. People want the general stuff. You know. So I was reading that uh, Donald Sterling uh, a couple of days ago was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, <laughs> uh, and so they took so they took his privileges away. So they took his team away. And uh, the family turned around and sold it to Steve Ballmer, who was a former CEO of Microsoft, for supposedly two billion dollars in cash. <laughs> two billion <laughs> in Man, cash. This, this story right here, for so many different reasons, is is just amazing. Mm-hmm. First of all, Donald Sterling has Alzheimer's. Well, but then, but then last night, as in Friday night. He uh, he filed suit against the NBA. But you know what, Detroit? But I saw something yesterday uh, uh, on the news last night also that said that part of the agreement was that the Sterling family, including Donald, was not going to fight anything. They were not going to hold the NBA. Uh, they, they were going to let the NBA, from their perspective, off the hook about everything. They're not going to sue the NBA. They're right. not going to hassle the NBA. This right. is over with. They're going to move on. They're going to take their $2 billion, and they're right. going to move on. And, and But I've also heard what you said. Right. So somewhere in there lies the truth. 
and that's the thing that's so amazing. I mean, you know, in one breath, they say the guy is mentally incapacitated, but two weeks ago he was on television. He didn't look he didn't look uh, like he had Alzheimer's to me. Mm-hmm. You know, not that I'm a, not that I'm a physician, but I mean, the guy was able to have a conversation with Anderson Cooper, and although kind of weirdly, he was well, able to express well, himself. But well, mean, the, but the weirdly may be may, it, that may be the the thing. I, I don't think <laughs> Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's doesn't excuse what he said. I no. don't. I don't think. But I'm not I think, that. and I'm not. I'm, I'm no. I understand that, and I'm not feeling. I, and I, I feel bad that he has Alzheimer's because I've known people with Alzheimer's. That's a horrible yeah. thing to go through. Yeah. But he needed to be out of the NBA. Yes, it was. And, it but, was. Ta- but, it was time to go. But now here's the here's the other part why I say this whole story is interesting. Steve Ballmer buys the team for two billion dollars, as you mentioned. Mm-hmm. It's the L.A. Clippers. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we're talking about the worst team in the NBA. The the New York Knicks, I'm a, actually a fan of the Knicks, are worth uh, $1.4 billion. The Lakers are, are, are worth just shy of a billion dollars. Right. So... But but wasn't the L.A. Clipper thing, wasn't that... I mean, Steve Ballmer, I mean, people submitted bids... Yeah. Oh, I mean, he so just, he over he overpaid. He overpaid, but what does that do for the rest of the viable real franchises with all steeped in NBA history? Yeah. That really did something. Yeah. When, when the worst team in the league is worth two billion dollars. Well, so but I, I, I don't know. I don't know that the Clippers are still the, the worst team, team, though. Are they still the worst? Yeah. They're not the worst no, team anymore. Yeah. yeah. No. No. Well, no. Now, no. I mean, they're making a move now. I mean, they're obviously yeah. they 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 may have played, but I mean, when you look at the storied history of the LA Clippers oh, but by is, far it's yeah. you I mean yeah. everybody knows yeah. Elgin Baylor yeah they suck beyond all suckativity well, but, but a part of that was the part of it was the leadership I mean now yeah. look at yeah. look at the Clippers now the Clippers for the next five years will be more popular than the Lakers they have star they have not just one or two they have two or three stars but let me um, let, 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 let me what what happened to the Lakers man I mean, they got old. They got, old. They got they had, but they got old. They got old in the blink of an eye. They got old like that. What happened? Well, Bus died, right? Yeah, Jerry Bus out of the out of the picture. You so okay, now I know he owned the team and he signed the checks, but but you but I but I believe you know now I've already cracked on the Clippers. So the good news, like <laughs> like uh, Mark said, is that you you know you have a guy who's willing to to put up. He didn't have to spend two billion dollars. He just wanted the, he wanted the team. Yeah. So yeah. so he drove the price up. You yeah. know the 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 next closest bid was what one point five one point six. Was that I the mean, one? Was that the one? Because I know Steve Jobs' wife made a bid too. Yeah. 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 So so can I you mean, imagine yeah. that they had little Apple logos on? <laughs> now they're gonna have the Microsoft logo. <laughs> Right, it's a battle. It's a battle. I, I think I think the, I think the Lakers the Lakers are over for the next decade. I think the Clippers. You are think off. it's going to be ten years before the Lakers get back in in contention to be competitive? I don't know about that now. Why, why would Why would we assume? See, I think that's the other thing. Like our generation, we feel like things the pendulum swings back. It don't swing back. It don't swing back and moves forward. I think. Why would the Lakers? What make what magical mystery trick? Do we think the Lakers will have? The only reason we feel that way is because the Lakers have always been good, but nothing says the Lakers are going to uh, be back okay. for a long time. So, so money <laughs> does, but I mean, I mean, no, they could, they could take money. Do, money doesn't make the team; it's the management that makes the team. Well, <laughs> yes, so they need, they need. The, what, the, well, they look need, at their infrastructure. What, what coach do they have? What's their who's their general manager? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Mitch Mitch Kupchak. Mitch Kupchak. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yes. but I mean, but but he was. Su- but how many years was he, how many years was he successful though? Yeah, he he's had, only had he's the last two years have been disastrous for him. Yeah, but before Here's, that, you got two words though, Kobe Bryant, man. Kobe, well, he's gone. He, he's done. So now, so Kobe, find- Kobe's not gonna. Kobe won't play anymore. Is he done? Yeah. No, he's not. As far as being an elite player on the level of Kobe Bryant, he's now a old Kobe Bryant. Mm-hmm. You know, you got two years left at most. That's a that's and a shame. You're 35 and you're old. You're old. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the sports world, though, right? Yeah. Hey, like speaking of spe- any young dynamic player to build around. Speaking of young dynamic players, what a segue! I read this article that says that Michael Jordan is like the biggest asshole in, in, in going around these, and that he's always actually been that way. But he got a pass because of the marketing machine that was around him. But what a lot of people don't know, well, he he's he's 
that he is like a really big, you know, and and it's like I didn't, I never knew that. I mean, I always thought he got he got a pass on a lot of things, like the gambling thing. He got a pass on, yeah. but I and I understood, and I guess I just never wanted really thought about it or wanted to believe it, but because he never really got involved in like social issues, he Anything. stayed away, huh? He never got involved in anything. He never ex- except other women. And, <laughs> that, I mean, and, and he yeah. got a and he got a pass with that too. It's amazing that he even made a comment on Donald Sterling. I mean, yeah. if you're if you're a real sports fan and you saw that Michael J- Michael Jordan issued a statement, people were shocked. Yeah, <laughs> he never he never stood up. He never he never <laughs> ever 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 said anything about it. You know, even in interviews. He was asked by you know by reporters you know how do what do you how do you feel about this how do you feel about kids getting shot over over one hundred and fifty dollar tennis shoes with your name on it mm-hmm. and and I mean it wasn't he didn't really I mean obviously he didn't say hey I'm really happy about that yeah. but you know what I'm saying he really, yeah. he never took a he stand. sidestepped it you, you know he basically said that you know uh, I, I don't want to say he said what Charles Barkley said about I'm not a role model. Yeah. I think he understood that, but he's but he. I, it seems like I remember him saying that I'm a basketball player. Mm. I'm not running for president. You know, something something along those lines. Well, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna quote Tennessee Ernie Ford. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead deep in the crates. <laughs> he sold his soul <laughs> to the company store. <laughs> <laughs> Nike. <laughs> So, so, but, so but I mean, the, Nike, baby. the article that I read, and I don't know where I couldn't find it again if I had to, I'm sure. But the one I read was like, it, 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 it almost implied that he was about a big a hole as Barry Bonds was when Barry played ball. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now that that's that's a Hall of Fame a hole, no, no pun intended. But yeah. I mean, because Barry was very difficult in his playing. I think he's kind of been humbled. Since he's not playing anymore, and everything that's happened to him, now that but, his head swelling went down, but when he <laughs> from the steroids, but when he when he was playing ball, you know, and the most amazing thing about Barry Bonds is that he was a Hall of Famer before before that. Yeah. So he got. I mean, if anybody ever got caught up in competition or trying to get some shine behind, you know, because he was trying to outshine Mark McGuire, who also who actually admitted, you know, what he did, but. That whole thing has been amazing, though. But I did not know that about Michael Jordan, that he is like one of the biggest <laughs> a-holes. That Tony, are... Tony, you just weren't paying attention, man. Well, maybe I wasn't. I mean, and I'll admit to that. Maybe I wasn't. But, I mean, I, I saw things, but I just, you know, it was like, but he got a pass on a lot of things. You have to admit he that. He was the greatest player in the NBA. I, I think the his acceptance speech into the Hall of Fame kind of showed, gave, showed uh, you know, uh, gave, some, gave us some insight on it. And I think at the end of the day, you know, I always – you know how these guys. We hear the activists, and you know the activists say the same thing. And so you know, you know the whole thing about you know he needs to be more accountable for the community. And you know, you go, yeah, you know. I think we all kind of we all understand. We understand both sides of the conversation. Mm-hmm. But you're right. I think when you look at Michael now in the big picture, now that the years have passed, and you see what happened. What really happened was Michael Jordan, definitely, who's the only owner of his own shoe that generates over $100 million annually, made the decision, probably by his consultants, to say, stay out of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is sign right here and stay out of that because Mm -hmm. you are Jordan, Air Jordans. And And you know, but you know, Mark, there are people watching this right now who may or may or may not comment, but they are thinking that we are way out of line. Because we're not, we're not, because we're supposed to, like we're supposed to support black, black talk shows or black movies, we're supposed to support our, our black celebrities and athletes no matter what. No, no, Tony, see that, 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 that's what I'm saying. That's, that's the grassrooters. Uh The grassrooters, the grassrooters have agreed to bring down Michael Jordan. (laughs) So we're safe. (laughs) (laughs) They designate you as, you know, people you can bring down. You can bring down Michael Jordan. Right. Leave Tavis alone. <laughs> Leave Tavis you can, alone. You can you can definitely bring down uh, any, any black Republican. It's like a, it's a list. So you didn't get the list. I didn't get the updated list, man. I missed that. So so is Fifty Cent on the list? <laughs> After that yeah. pitch. After that pitch, because I saw a graph that said they they charted 
uh, some of the worst pitches ever. And they said, and according to this grab, by far the worst uh, celebrity thrown out the first pitch ever in the history of doing this, by far, according to this grab, because he was like so out there. I mean, he was halfway up the first baseline with that throw. And, so and saying he did it for a setup, for promo- promoting his album, promoting his album. It wasn't his fault. <laughs> it wasn't his fault. No, no. Lance Stevenson blew on the ball. <laughs> what the hell was that? What was what was that about? And Larry Bird, like, it says we're talking about Lance Stevenson. Larry Bird, who's president of the Pacers, supposedly had a conversation about Lance about doing stuff like that. And said, but he Don't. did it. He, he did it anyway. Yeah. In the, the game that, uh, La- that you know in Miami uh, advanced. Yeah. Uh, did you guys see? He, he went up to LeBron and was like, touched, <laughs> the, touched him on the chin. Yeah, yeah. What is what is that? What is that about though? But it's interesting. It's interesting about Fifty Cent because he like said that I'm you know I'm a thug. I'm not a ball player. Yeah, you're right about that. That's the one you go. Well, he's not a thug either. Though, he so thugged it out with that ball. But you know <laughs> that was that was sad. But you know uh, uh, I don't know if you guys knew this, but I remember reading this that back in that movie Any Given Sunday, the one with Jamie Foxx. That Puffy originally was going to have that role, but he couldn't throw. He, he threw football like a girl. Well, you know uh, what? For, for fifty on behalf of Fifty Cent and beyond, on on behalf of Puffy, it's because if you're a G, if you're a gangster, if you're a thug, it's it's because of years of shooting a gun sideways. Oh, is that what that is? Because it yeah, kind of that's, hey. that's why that's why <laughs> I can't throw a ball straight. <laughs> is that the one they're going with? That's rotator cuff. The okay. rotator cuff. Well, well. <laughs> You know, see, if I was 50, I'd have gone with the bullet wounds and stuff like that. But if he's going to go with that one, okay. All right. All right. So what have you guys noticed in the news? I have, uh, I, I, I ran across this um, interesting article, you know, the movie of, uh, about Nina, Nina, um, I'm sorry, the movie about Nina Simone is mm-hmm. coming out, mm-hmm. right? And it, it, they, they, uh, they screened it at the, at Cannes, but they didn't screen it to the public. They they screened it for the distributors. Okay. And the big controversy is you know Zoe Saldana mm-hmm. who dons yeah. you know blackface and a prosthetic nose to play uh, Nina Simone. Mm-hmm. And I read this uh, I read this uh, you know it was an, it was a great uh, blog about it uh, by uh, you can check it out at globalgrind.com. T Better Baldwin. And that the, you know, basically she's saying that, you know, this is a travesty and that, you know, the the, the fact that she had to don a, a prosthetic nose and darken her skin when you have actresses who of her caliber who are available, who are made that way, are available. And she was saying the reason this 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 nose, this 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 Nina Simone nose is this this, uh, you know, the nose and the thick lips this is a part of really who Nina Simone really was. And so that's why it's so important because the, you know, she was saying that her mother, her mother looked like her. And when people valid, people said she was beautiful and said her mother was beautiful and Nina Simone is beautiful. They made her as a little girl feel that she too was beautiful. And that's the struggle that most African Americans or Africans have is that they do not feel beautiful. And this movie just by casting uh, Zoe Zaldana almost does the same thing and disrespects that yet again, and she felt like Zoe should have passed on the role, uh, and maybe you know, you know, whatever. So the article, it's interesting because I understand again fully what she's talking about, and I feel her. But there is something about this that I'm like, you know what? Back to how things really work. That's not really how it works. If somebody says Tony Scott, I want you to play. Who's that guy they say look like Tony? Andre, somebody in the music industry. <laughs> you happen to be Hispanic and you just happen to look just like him mm-hmm. and you're an actor. Mm-hmm. You're not going to say, well, you know, I appreciate the offer, but no, I won't do it because there's an, a well-deserved African-American who could play the role. And I'm not, you know what I mean? It's just, that's not, not and, and the, and the, the thing is, the, the person who wrote the blog, I'm quite sure, understands how the game works. So yeah. to me, it's like they're they're probably trying to get a response out of people, mm-hmm. and, and 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 the and the response will be misdirected because it will be aimed at Zoe. Yes, and, and Zoe Zoe took the role, and she should have taken the role. It was offered to her because it could be a career changer for her. It could it could be her breakout role. Uh, if you're going to be mad at somebody, you should be mad at whoever decided to offer her the gig. 
But then again, that's their interpretation, and they saw something in Zoe who they felt could pull it off. So to be, that's just misguided. That's like, like, that's like shooting a, a, a gun in a crowd full of people and like, you know, it's going to hit somebody. What the hell? You know, it's like, I mean, you come, you're, you're shooting in the dark here. I mean, because, I mean, it doesn't make any sense to say something like that. It's just, it's, it's just wrong. It's a movie. It thought, it's a it's movie. A, it's, a, it's a freaking movie. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, Sidney Poitier played Thurgood Marshall. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Man, he did. He did. He, did. he did. he is the greatest actor of a generation. I mean, were we less entertained by the film because? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, we were. Just like Andrew Brower's family. I mean, Benjamin, I Benjamin O. Davis' family has a hit on Andrew Brower for playing <laughs> Benjamin O. Davis. They were like, "If you ever see him, tell Big Mama because we're gonna take him out." <laughs> <laughs> Along with uh, uh, Terrence Howard playing Nelson Mandela, no. you know, you, 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 <laughs> what? But, yeah, so you can't, so you, and you can't be mad at the at the actor, the actress right. for accepting a role. That is so mis. And to criticize them as saying they should have passed on the role is is beyond naive. And, and it, it it's just you you you're you're looking to incite something, in my opinion. Idris Elba as uh, as uh, Nelson Mandela also check mark a well muscled. I, I saw the movie and it felt like Nelson Mandela as Idris Elba could have just wrestled apartheid to its knees. Uh, yeah, throw, he, throw me apartheid, I will destroy it myself. That's right. I will grab apartheid by a cage and break match. It a cage match in Johannesburg. Man, <laughs> so. <laughs> And Bella's walking in. <laughs> He's awfully spry. <laughs> man, come on, man. So, uh, so where are we with uh, bring our girls home, man? Are, are we? Uh, we know where they are. Is it official? Do that we know wh- where they are? Well, official. Well, for, official for who? Official I mean, for is who? is it official? Do we know where these girls are? Does are the word saying- official translate to Nigerian? Does the Nigerian army know where the girls are? Is that well, what the, they're saying they do. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. I just yeah. I just wanted to be clear on that. So, <laughs> I all mean, right. You no, know, they they know. They I think we know the same thing that we knew weeks ago. Right. That they're in a specific area, mm-hmm. and you know, um, that, that's re- that's really all we know. That's really all. We, I mean, they said okay. that they don't want to go in because they feel like this group Boko Haram will. Slaughter the girls, right? Slaughter the girls. Yeah. Now, earlier this week, and there really hasn't been any any new news, at least I haven't seen any, but earlier in the week, there was a story that four girls escaped again. You know, I, I, I did see that, yeah. But they didn't say they escaped this week. They just said... They escaped. They, I mean, there's the, the storyline along this you know developing story is interesting because the information doesn't nece- necessarily match up with the way news happens you know if, if four girls escape right now it would be breaking news and you know but this was kind of like four girls escaped <laughs> yeah well yeah. when yeah. i don't know right. we don't know when but they escaped yeah so uh I, you know it, it the way the nigerian government has been you know uh you know they they didn't want help from the outside world um you know, the air marshal at one point I had a quote when I was doing a newscast earlier in the week where he's like, you know, uh, basically, if you leave us alone, we can go and, and do what we need to do. It, ain't nobody leaving you alone. The whole world <laughs> no. is, is yeah. you know, looking in on this. Yeah, we're on that. Yeah. There's something wrong because, you know, you're, tr- you know, they were going to make a deal with Boko Haram. Right. You know, you released 100 terrorists. 100 terrorists. 100, yeah. And we will release the girls. Or release some of the girls. I mean, and they were going to be down with that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but then, you know, he had conflicting points of view. Sure. President said, good luck, Jonathan. And he really did. Hey, is there ever a truer, truer <laughs> phrase? Hey, good luck, Jonathan, on this one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he said that, no, we're not going to make a deal with him. But, you know, at one point, they were... That was in the news. The government was going to negotiate. So I, I don't know. I, I really feel for these families that uh, going through that. Yeah, you know, are going through that, and they're not getting 
the information that they need. Sure. Um, it's just it's a sad story. I hope, I hope I hope it works out. You know, but it's a shame. What else you got? Did you guys see the Google car? Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the driverless car? A driverless car. Now, you know, I've been knocked about this because uh, when I've had talk shows and just in general um, discussions about issues that maybe they don't necessarily fit in the African-American box, but I think they're just as important, um, you know, for us to discuss. Because if we're going to be on this planet in the 21st century, we should probably uh, get with the times. Mm-hmm. And you know, instead of <laughs> instead of going out and buying a new Cadillac, oh, a gas guzzling vehicle, you know, maybe we should maybe we also should find and use some of these resources that you know. Uh, I'm not saying that black folks don't, but I'm just saying that I don't think there's a broad conversation about some of these things. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so I've been I've always been interested in these hybrid vehicles and and you know and things that would integrate that we can integrate in our lives easily without having to be you know a uh, sandal wearing uh you know <laughs> green piece kind of person mm-hmm. so the so the google car is interesting to me it doesn't it does it drives itself you just sit in the car that's perfect for black people <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect for us mom you can beat your kids now when <laughs> out, out in the back seat <laughs> told you <laughs> you know you could text all day long. You know, you can do everything you want to do, and the car just takes you to the location that that you wanted to go to. And true, I, think true. I think that's cool. When you bring your bring it to Uncle Teddy, you know you're gonna say, "Hey, man, this is nice, man. Do they have it a Broham version?" Because <laughs> <laughs> you know we're gonna have to hook it up. You probably can get just get the technology, and then put it in a in a. Uh, an old Cutlass. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> you, can cutlass. Have a li- you can basically have a living room in a car. Just you know, you don't need no yes. driving. Just flat screen, you know, flat yeah. screen TVs in the car. You know it's coming. Man. Oh well. Well, there you go. So all right, that's our men on scandal because we're at about uh, forty minutes, man. It flies by. Yeah. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, if you leave comments and things like that down below, and uh, we'll see you next week with a, another episode. So uh, I'm Tony Scott. That's Troy Johnson. That's Mark Clark. And uh, again, we will see you next time.